Hey there rulers, DMO73 here bringing you the deck profile for K1 Abdul. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to pre-order upcoming Force of Will sets, ccgprime.com for singles and supplies, cardodoco.com for those rulers in the international market looking for product, the Ruler School Circuit Series now offering our 2024 Quarter 1 Circuit Kits, and our guest lecturer members, Fight Ramen. Class is in session. So here is the list. As always, you can take a link right down below to Force of Wind to go check it out for yourself or copy it over to your deck lists if you want to reference it later. K1 Abdul. Now, I understand the idea that you think that we're going to be flipping Abdul as fast as possible in this list. That is not the case. We are setting this deck up to be a situation where once Abdul flips, we're kind of like that closes the game out. I know that in our games, we kind of flipped him pretty early, which was probably not what we would normally do in most circumstances but against a deck like Neural Lithotep, being able to stop enter effects was really beneficial. We just kind of happened to walk into um, the Magic Stone Dance of Chaos. That's just something we have to accept. But that's also one of the reasons why we're playing Crimson Moon in this list, because there is a very easy way to just give Abdul Imperishable. And when you have an Abdul that's Imperishable that you can judgment for one, because you find the Gruce Ballesta quickly, things can get kind of crazy with the ability to control the deck. Really, this is a Seer value deck that's generating a lot of things and kind of this is the win con but it's control elements because we're playing pure blue black pretty much is that abdul and his kind of package just kind of as a bonus so going into it the treasury package for the treasury deck is a pictorial scroll for some additional card draw a magical wind chime a an arc gears grail which we can turn off on our turn when we are abdul so that we get to recover stones but our opponent doesn't a robe of the fire rat because the new text lets us be able to manipulate it although most of the time we're just going to go ahead and use the fire ability for it and a miracle millennium medicine to be able to kind of recycle and kind of keep things going alive especially when you consider the fact that we have mikey which can also help us tuck back in those treasuries to rebuy them later so this idea is like this deck will never run out of cards is kind of the concept the abdul package itself is pretty small we're just playing a couple copies of summoning art because it allows us to do some pretty neat things Things with Furcus. Uh, the Terrible Prophecy is there just as a couple kind of backup pieces. Again, you can set up a kind of chokehold on your opponent. And then a single copy of Shemhaza, because why not? You can search it off of Furcus. It becomes free. Uh, it's probably always going to be able to resolve uh, to get cheated out. We can turn it off with Abdul, and we can kind of... It's also a way to have life loss, kind of, in the deck, uh, so that we can get to a point where we would be able to kill um, a Dark Tree, although Terrible Prophecy also helps to do that. There the deck's just about treasury value. As you can see, we are playing 12 one-drop spot removal spells to maximize the ability to make trials go off. Moon Dust Revolution can also be a win con because it hits our opponent's face. And we have a bunch of different treasury items, so it's very easy to make this hit for a ton of damage. Um, obviously, attack order is really relevant right now, and that really helps us too. And then Mermaid's Thunder Parasol, again, makes it so we never deck out and just generates really good value. A couple of Sugihimes also serves as a win condition to be able to help search up things like Fleeting Moon Jewel if we need it from hand, or Apollo Sphere, or whatever we need to get, or if we like have recycled Miracle Millennium Medicine with Mikey. A couple of Muse staring at just because there are some things in the deck that, you know, matchups out there that we want to be able to mess with. A Muse or Girl staring at probably should exist in most decks right now, either main board or sideboard, and so for us, it's Muse. And a single copy of the best treasury to ever exist, Alice Zeus Incarnate, mainly because it's also a resonator that we can kind of instant speed cheat out with trials, which is nice, and it gives us something to put an Apollo Sphere on, which is awesome, and that's why we're playing Thunder of Zeus. So Thunder of Zeus is a water chant with quick cast, and so we can just banish Apollo Sphere to pay the cost for it and get this huge kind of bombastic spell. We're also at a point where because we're playing Wind Chime, we can just cast this card. Um, it's rarely ever going to come up, but sometimes you can just have five and have five will and win the game. So there you go. It's also why we're playing a couple of Kagi's Pictorial Scrolls in the main board. One, because it plays into Moondust Revolution, and two, it's more draw outside of just the one here. Um, just in general, it feels like the treasury that's okay to draw into hand, especially because Fleeting Moon Jewel then can cheat it into field as well. Fleeting Moon Jewel also serves as a really great way to put Crimson Moon into the field, which then sets us up for Abdul. You'll see down here, there's this kind of like starting zone kind of thing. This is the kind of hand that I would love to see in my opener. I've got two, three different spot removal sources. 
summoning art to set up for being able to go to Furcus and Crimson Moon. So if my opponent plays anything turn one, they're an aggressive deck, we can kill their first turn play, go get Magical Wind Chime off of it, and then if they play a second thing, have their will to be able to play and kill the second thing, which then kills uh, that and could go get us a Fleeting Moon Jewel out of the deck, and then Fleeting Moon Jewel would be able to put Crimson Moon into the field so that next turn if we hit Gris Ballesta on one or if we hit one of the Pure Heart Stones, that means the next turn Gris Ballesta is certainly going to be the Stone Call and we can flip over Abdul for one and still be at a position where we've got um, two will to be able to play into that because we'll have the Stone and Magical Wind Chime. So at a really good spot to be able to keep playing the game at that point in time. And then that sets us up for a turn three, really nice summoning art with potentially one to two Furcus and you get the gist. There's a lot of really good value that I think can come out of this deck. A lot of good like win conditions still. It does have good pressure. It's not just stall until you win. Mikey can duplicate our additions so it can become a second copy of Pictorial Scroll or uh, it can become a second copy of Wind Chime or Robe of the Fire. Like it, it, a lot of value can be got. And Mikey himself can just tap those additions to become huge and help us beat down. And if we have enough treasuries, eventually Tsukihime reanimates them and kills your opponent. Um, so a lot of cool stuff to do here. I really, really like this list a lot its main weakness is like super bursty sudden wide board states like you saw with the um uh, Nyartley matchup like if it was one to two things at a time we had a pretty good handle on keeping the board con contained and controlled um if it gets to like rebirth of flaming disaster where suddenly there's 12 dudes on board out of nowhere then you're going to struggle with this list a little bit for sure but there's certainly some things you can do about that um it's just about the matchup and the sideboard options as well with things like falling into the cracks of time would be a good choice uh, to be able to put in here you could also play split lumi up to be able to rfg things that would be a problem there's just some good choices here that you can play into that i think make this deck a lot of fun and something that may be worth considering in the competitive environment based on what your local meta is so let me know how you guys have been playing c I know a lot of people have been partnering her with Little Red, but I do think there's a lot more flexibility that comes with uh, the Trials engine. I'm curious to see how you've been building it, or if you've been taking a more Abdul-heavy approach with a list, let me know in the comment sections down below. And until next time, this is DMO73 saying, Class Dismissed.